My name is Sam Vaknin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. The denizens of the former Soviet and socialist countries are marked by their resistance to learning from others. Now that the West is mired in multiple troubles and failures, they feel that their way of life and their mentality, their choices and their policies have been vindicated and are superior to the West's. Smug hubris is everywhere I look in all the former socialist and communist countries. Add to this access to the internet, this great equalizer of the stupid, and everyone in these shabby countries, from Macedonia to Russia, holds himself or herself to be a genius and not in need of any further edification. But the truth is that these inhabitants of the wrong side of the Iron Curtain reject newfangled knowledge and good advice, not because they are traditionalists, but because they are craven and because they are pragmatic. Start with craven. In the paranoid and surrealistic landscape of the former Soviet bloc, to admit to ignorance is to publicly acknowledge a deficiency, a personal defect, and a shortcoming. It is to hand your foes a weapon. It is not only a narcissistic injury, which it is, but it is also a guaranteed professional suicide. I have yet to hear anyone in these backwater lands utter the magic words, I don't know. Thus, in the interest of self-preservation, it is more advisable to invent facts than to search for them, to claim education than to really seek it, and to feign er erudition than to acquire it. Ill-informed professors pass on their half-baked notions and inane theories from one molested generation to another in a vast conspiracy aided by the lack of access to foreign texts and outside experts. And security, bred by nescience, yields conformity and rigid conservatism. Towing the line is a survival strategy, not rocking the boat, a religious principle. The boorish quid pro quo of Luddites, quacks, and conspiracy theorists, the only form of higher education. Inevitably, as a purely defensive posture, a monopoly of learning has emerged in all these geographical domains. Real knowledge, propounded by genuine, typically Western ex experts, threatens to unravel this unholy cartel to counteract the vested interests that it reifies, and to shatter the ersatz scholarship that it is founded upon. Hence the fierce ob objection to any outside interference and intrusion. Provincialism and obscurantism are elevated to the level of an ideology, often with chauvinistic and nationalistic hues. Nor is there a grassroots movement of minds eager for intellectual enlightenment and cross-fertilization. Education in these realms is a loss-making proposition. Formal training goes unrewarded in these nether regions. Nepotism and cronyism reign supreme. One's advancement, future prospects and career depend on one's connections or family of origin. One's peers are perforce disqualified to judge one's progress and accomplishments, have been, having been educated by the same inept ignoramuses and oil snake salesmen that here pass for professors. Indeed, why bother with textbooks and exams when social networking in the old way gets you places faster and far more securely?